power of a podcast extends well beyond plugging in the mic. So if you're ready to learn how it can help you build a big business, then I'm your best friend. Hi, I'm Joanne Bolt, and I am obsessed with all things podcasting and creating an unapologetically big revenue business with it. From podcast guesting to podcast hosting and everything in between, we're going to dive into it all and show you step by awesome step how using a podcast can and will grow your business. So grab a glass of wine and pop your headphones on because girlfriend, happy hour has begun here on The Beat Word. Hey, B Word listeners, welcome back. This week's special guest is Becky, and Becky is amazing because she specializes in breakthroughs in your marriage and your business and how you just get through that next healing process, especially if you had a little bit of trauma. And I know many of you are like me. We've all had some trauma in our life, whether it's a big trauma with a big T or little traumas, little T's, they all add up. And they make us the person we are today. So let me introduce you to Becky and welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you so much. First of all, I love the name of your show. I'm really (laughs) excited to be here. So fun. Thanks for having me in your space. Absolutely. I always like to create space for fellow female entrepreneurs. So Becky, how did you get into the space that you're in? Yeah. So before this, I was actually in network marketing. I was a hyper achiever, which, you know, at the time I was like, I'm accomplishing everything and I'm earning the free trips and the, you know, free prizes and the free cars. And wow, I'm doing awesome. But now if I were to look back on that season, if I'm being honest, a lot of it was out of a trauma response, Mm. you know, not wanting to deal with my marriage crumbling at the time, you know, my health not doing well. It was all through the pandemic, drinking way too much. Like there was a lot out of alignment that I, um, I went to hyperachieving to feel a sense of, of worth, you know, of value and escape. And so after, um, that leading to, you know, years of hyperachieving and then the marriage leading to a point where we were actually separated after 10 years and two kids and on the verge of divorce, um, I stumbled upon an online coach that had a course that taught you how to save your marriage by moving trauma out of your body. Mm. And it was the one thing that I hadn't tried. We had spent 10 years. Uh, we got married very early, right out of college in therapy, couples counseling. I devoured every book I could get my hands on, podcasts, marriage retreats, webinars, like all the things I could do to try to, you know, heal my part and for us to try to save and salvage what we felt like was dissolving. Um, And so the trauma healing by moving it out of your body, that was one thing that was new. It was like, I haven't really gotten into the body. I've done a lot of things from the neck up and maybe that's why I'm spinning my wheels because it's just keeping me, like I'm learning a lot of information, but I'm stuck in my head and it's not affecting any change. And so that was when I learned nervous system repair and um, somatic healing. Somatic is just a word that means pertaining to the body as opposed to the mind. And fast forward, it ended up being the breakthrough that resurrected our marriage from the dead. Like I still have to pinch myself and I'm shocked and grateful to say that we're thriving now and our marriage is in in a completely entirely new space, um, better than the honeymoon phase, I tell my clients. And this was really the missing piece. This was the game changer for us. And so when we experienced that, it got to a point where I was watching my marriage coach and I was like, how the heck do I do what she does? And I talked to her. She pointed me in the direction of a business coach who taught me how to take my experience in this concept and turn it into a business. And so I said goodbye to network marketing, had reached my expiration date in that place anyway, grateful for the experience, but I was fully exclusively focused um, from that point forward of just getting this out to as many women as I could possibly, you know, share this with. And so that's the course that I run now teaching deeply committed, high achieving wives, how to restore thriving intimacy by moving trauma out of their body. Um, the unexpected breakthrough that came with that was the breakthrough in my business and healing money wounds. And that was like the unexpected trickle effect that I experienced coming into this work for marriage, but then getting out of it an entirely different, you know, path and purpose in life. 
Yeah. I feel like so many women, especially we don't realize how every little thing connects together and affects every other thing you're doing. So if your business is not in the right spot and you're not thriving and making the revenue that you wanted to make, you know, uh, and you can disagree or agree with me. I mean, jump in, but I feel like a lot of times we sit back and we cross our arms and we stomp our feet in frustration and we say, oh my gosh, I don't have enough leads. My sales magnet isn't good enough. I need to buy more ads. That's how I'm going to increase my revenue. And the reality is you need to fix something else in your life mm -hmm. because you can't show up fully in the business if something else is broken or wrong, or there's a kink in the chain. I totally agree with you. We're holistic beings and it's all interconnected. And years ago, I heard an analogy that's always stuck with me, but it's like women's brains are like spaghetti and men's are like waffles. Have you heard that? <laughs> I have not. Tell me more. Okay. <laughs> so like with spaghetti, you throw the sauce on it, like it's all interconnected. And so we are triggered by something like our husband bumping us in the kitchen when really it's about like a parenting thing that happened just a couple hours ago. And everything is all in interconnected. We're thinking about everything all at once. Men are more like waffles. They're able to, for the most part, it's, it's a generalization, but I found it to be pretty true. Um, they're able to compartmentalize and separate things and like focus on what's going on at the task at hand and without all of these ruminating thoughts, you know, spinning around in the background. And so I think it all connects for sure. Okay. I guarantee you at some point in the next couple of weeks after this episode drops, I'm just going to yell waffle at my husband <laughs> and he's going to be like, what the hell was that all about? <laughs> what is Joanne on? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on in that brain of hers right now? All right. So tell me one of the, the things that you teach your women are about the nervous system. Walk, walk us through some of that. Yeah, I would love to. And, you know, I could geek out about this for hours. I will shorten it. When it comes to the nervous system, we have two main nervous system states that we can be in. There's the sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight, flight, freeze, fawn response. Fawn is usually the one that people are like, wait, what's that? Um, and that's really just like people pleasing, seeking safety and, you know, approval, love, belonging from others. And so it's that that's the system where we're triggered, right? And where we're in survival state. The parasympathetic nervous system is that rest, digest, calm, I'm safe, I can breathe, um, thriving state. And so it's not that one is better than the other. Like we're designed to flow in and out of both, you know, in any given day, even if it's like, oh, I'm late for my podcast interview, you know, we get a little trigger, like, <gasps> you know, we feel a little anxiety, but then as soon as we get here, right, we're like, ah, oh, okay. And then we go back to the parasympathetic the the tricky thing is the problem with just how fast paced our society is and how much trauma so much have, you know, all of us have been through, especially these years that these times that we're living in through the pandemic, um, we get caught in that sympathetic nervous system. We get caught in a constant state of trigger. We don't really know life outside of being triggered. And that's where this healing is just pivotal and primal, in my opinion, when it comes to wanting breakthroughs in any area of your life is focusing on how do I restore homeostasis to my nervous system and turn basically the system from the alarm bells going off all the time, constantly sounding danger, even when danger is not present, back to like a a regular circuit of like, okay, my nervous system knows how to come back to calm. And then if there is danger, it will alert me, but then I know how to come back home to myself after that. So how would someone begin that process of telling the nervous system, calm down, it's okay? Mm -hmm. A lot of people try like what I tried for 10 years, stuff from the neck up, which actually just keeps us stuck in our head. So like saying things to ourselves or affirmations, it can actually keep us stuck. Like you're okay. You're safe. It, it works a little bit, but what is going to be more important to focus on in those moments is getting back into your body. And so really easy, just trick your listeners can even practice literally right now as we're talking is a grounding trick that I love to give my clients. It's the five senses. And so in a moment of trigger, being able to stop and name five things that you see, four things you can hear, three things you can physically touch, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. 
And it helps you when you rep that out, move from that sympathetic nervous system back into the parasympathetic. Um, we all have this nerve, this giant nerve called the vagal the vagus nerve mm-hmm. that runs from the base of our spine to the um, base of our skull to the bottom of our spine. It's like the super highway of um, chemical messengers going up and down from our brain to our body constantly. And 20% of those messengers, those neurotransmitters go from our brain to our body and 80% go from our body to our brain. And so if we're doing, if we're tapping into modalities and techniques that are just like, it's called top down things from the neck up, like listening, talking, reading, we're working with the 20%. And so it's going to feel kind of like a salmon swimming upstream in our healing process. So if we want to supercharge our healing and fast track it, really getting into the body, working with that 80% of the natural flow of the biochemical messengers that are already moving through our body is where a lot of people are starting to see, okay, this is where the magic is happening. I find this really fascinating at this conversation today. I don't, I don't know if you know too much about my background, but about 15 years ago, I was actually abducted out of my real estate office. And I lived a good 10 years after that in that fight or flight state of mind at all times. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize as the time went on, I got so used to being in that mode that I didn't realize I was constantly triggered. Like Mm -hmm. I knew for the first year afterward, yes, I would get triggered in the middle of the grocery store and walk out and leave all my groceries in the cart. I probably pissed, you know, the little bagger people off so many times. They probably saw me come and they were like, oh hell, we're gonna have to put all that up again. But it got so normal in my life that it then took something else, which was a surgery um, that I had that I freaked out in the middle of the surgery and had some neuro stuff going on. It took a doctor pointing out to me that like, I'm still living in that trigger point. Mm. And until you let some of that go, and work out some of that body stuff, like you're talking about, like the rest of it is never going to get any easier. And you're just going to constantly be making your life harder. Man. So my mother-in-law is a real estate agent and she went to a conference once and where she's like heard stories like that happening, but I've never met one personally, you know, that that's your story. Oh yeah. That's insane. Well, you don't think so, right? Like you get into real estate and you're like, oh, this can happen. It won't happen to me. You know, or you get into a a bad marriage thinking, oh, that could happen, but it won't happen to me. Or you get into whatever, like, oh, Mm -hmm. I would never do drugs. Those aren't all my stories. The real estate one is, but I think most people don't realize, oh, it can happen to you. And I'm so grateful to people like you who are now putting out podcasts, who are now putting that message out. Because for me, if I had found your podcast like 10 years ago, I probably would have worked through things a lot faster because going to a therapist was, I mean, it was okay. Right. Like, but most therapists you sit down with, you're like, well, I need to talk about this. And they're like, oh my God, I've never actually had a client experience this. And immediately you're like, well, this isn't going to work, you know? And so you discount it and then you live in that triggered state and your work and what you're doing in the breakthrough of people with their marriages and their business and moving that trauma out. I'm just so grateful that there are people like you out there now doing this because God bless it. It's going to make our, our whole world a little bit better. I honestly feel just grateful to have stumbled upon it too. This is like the last minute buzzer beater game changer. And I feel the same way as you. Like I wish I had this 10 years ago. It could have saved me so much unnecessary extra trauma, struggling heartache and you know what you're saying with traditional talk therapy it is just that it's usually talking and again keeping you kind of stuck in that space of the neck up the 20 percent. and so it's not that it doesn't help at all but if you know it's you really got to bring in the somatic piece of that and I can't tell you how many people I've heard that from where they get in their therapist chair um and the therapist has said like oh my god I've never heard somebody go through something that bad basically is like what they is like wow I feel like extra broken now I know (laughs) yeah you're like please don't write a paper on this this is like no (laughs) all right so what's the number one with the the clients you work with, what is the number one thing that you see? Is it marriage? Is it business? Is it um, physical trauma? Like what is, and I'm not like trying to pigeonhole you into one thing, but 
if our audience is listening here, I want to make sure that they understand who could reach out to you and what, you know, what the benefits are here. I mean, yeah, I get it because I've been through that. something. Mm-hmm. No, my, my ideal client to work with is deeply committed, high achieving wives who want to learn how to restore thriving intimacy by yeah. this body work, you know, moving trauma out of the body. I'm working on a program that's going to be breakthroughs in business, health, wealth, parenting, purpose, spirituality, and more. That's what my podcast is like all about in the meantime. But right now it's, it's really the married women and a lot of married women, because of the content I put out, they think, but I'm on the fence of like, should I stay or should I go? I I don't know if I want to save the marriage. Like, am I a good fit? And you two are a perfect candidate because that's where I was. And what I found is I was terrorized and tortured by that indecision for so many years. And it wasn't until I learned how to calm down my nervous system and move that, you know, clear that energetic, those blocks out that I finally had the clarity. Um, I thought it was actually going to be the opposite. I thought, oh my gosh, once I get all healed, I'm finally going to be, you know, have the balls to leave. And it was the opposite. It was like, oh my God, I feel safe. And this is actually changing the toxic dance. And I, I know for sure that I want to stay. I was never able to have that, but there's other clients that I work with that this was the courage and the healing that they needed to move towards that separation and not feel um, like it's the death of them, like actually feel peace. And like, this is, this is good for me. And I feel empowered and to have the support through that. Yeah. And I think that that's really critical because no matter what you're going through, again, we're going to loop back around to that statement at the beginning. It affects all aspects of your life. If you're struggling in your marriage, it's going to affect your friendships. It's going to affect how you show up for your business. It's going to affect whether you realize it or not. So if you are struggling and you are having that moment of like, what the hell, I don't understand what's going on. Getting that breakthrough moment and figuring out, do I stay? Do I go? How do I move to the next thing? What do we need now in our relationship is probably going to actually help you in everything else as well. Yeah, that was, it was for sure the path. It's what I've seen with my clients. That was just the most blaring, like, fire alarm in my life was my marriage for other people's it's their health you know like that's the big thing the big fire they need to put out first and then it can trickle into breakthroughs in other areas for others is parenting right whatever your thing is but if you feel like what's consuming most of your thoughts and keeping you stuck and you know in this trapped energy is is relationships then that might be the best place to start if that's what you're leaning into awesome <clears throat> i love this okay so First off, how do they get in touch with you? Where do we connect with you? How do we, how do your people, what platform do you play on the most? Ooh, I play on Instagram the most. Love Instagram. Um, you can find me at Rebecca Liaste and you can DM me. I get in my DMs Monday through Friday and talk back to you like a real person. And then my podcast is Your Breakthrough Blueprint on all major platforms. Okay. And so because we deal, I work with a lot of women podcasters, that's my specialty. I'm going to ask you the question we ask everyone, which is how has your podcast impacted your business? I think first of all, like it has increased leads. You know, I've noticed my Instagram following growing since I put out the podcast on April 1st. Um, we got to reach the top 10% of podcasts globally just after one month. And so it was this, it's this, okay, confirmation. Like this is truly what you were meant to do. And this is depositing something real in people. And I get constant messages, you know, week in and week out of like this episode spoke to me, this was my takeaway. And so it's really created this community now, um, beyond just the Instagram community, a podcast community where people are sharing episodes and, and healing through that as well. Um, especially for the women who aren't able to get into my coaching container, you know, this isn't a time to invest in my coaching program. The podcast space has been amazing for those who just want free help. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's really critical that everyone kind of understands from a podcasting perspective. And it sounds like you've gotten this as well, that the reality is most of us aren't going to monetize the podcast. The podcast will monetize the business. Mm -hmm. And it's that way to form relationship with your community free people yep. listening to podcasts aren't ready to, to put down the money yet. They, they need to find out who you are and 
whether they want to be a part of your world, and then they'll go find you and they'll invest the money. And so having that free option is just such a great way to, to build that relationship, nurture that relationship without you even knowing who they are. Cause half the time you don't know who's listening. Yeah. There's nothing like it. It's so intimate. It's like, a it's the intimacy of like a phone call where they're, I'm in their ear for like an hour, you know, at a time. And so it's building the trust. It has led to sales calls out of nowhere, new clients coming in, um, just from people not even telling me, but yes, yeah, secretly listening and then coming to me like, oh my gosh, I've binged all the episodes and can we talk? <laughs> you gotta love the lurkers. All right. We will make sure that all of your links are in the show notes, of course, because we love to give love to our female podcasters. Thank you, Becky. This has been amazing. I'm sure our audience loved it. And as always, you guys build the business of your dreams, put a microphone on it, and we will see you same time next week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thanks, Joanne.